Welcome to Car C in Korea. I introduce newly released Genesis, Hyundai, and Kia cars. And I am at EV charging station. We see a Tesla, Nero, Seoul, Kona. And you know why I'm here? Ionic 5. The last time we were here, the previous one was sitting here. This is actually a different one from the one we saw last time because I'm starting the video in the same manner but immediately I can tell that from that orange reflector. As I've said, this is for the American market, US, North American market that requires a orange reflector up in the headlight and the last one we saw did not have it. And I have learned the hard way that Ionic 5 is really, really hard to find on the road. So for today, I will actually be sitting here until this car moves and would like to capture this car rolling on the roads. For domestic market, that being Korean market, Ionic 5 is written in letterings on the back right there. However, this model does not. That means this is for the export and overseas market. They don't have the electrical tape like the last time, but they still have some masking tape over here. Seems like they're still working with um, this flap. And also there is a button. And once you touch that close button, this will close on its own. And you can also do that with your remote controller. For cars that don't support, they need an adapter. Whereas for Ionic 5, that's not the case. You can go to whichever the voltage it supports and just plug it in. It will do the conversion on its own and there is only one outlet. You know what I'm talking about when you are making a reference to that of a Porsche Taycan. Um, that has two different you know, outlets for different voltage and charging stations and whatnot. But that's not the case for this Ionic 5. As we can see, Kona as well as Seoul and Nero, they all have the charging port on the front. Not for Tesla, not for Ionic 5 either. Oh, they came in, they're moving out, they're rolling out. There's two Ionic 5s here, oh my god. One's the silver, I have to double check on the color. But that one is rolling out, and uh, that one's gonna get charged up, but I'll be following that one. Oh my god, finally, finally I am capturing this. Alright, so as I've said, that's a DRL. As I've said, uh, that's a DRL right there. Orange reflector, that one doesn't have it. Listen to the sound. I gotta chase the Ionic 5. I gotta chase that. Car. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Car Scene Korea. For the first time ever, I am capturing the Ionic 5 on the road. And I'll have my exhaust on. By the way, I am driving the Luster N and uh, this car is um, slightly under uh, 300 horsepowers and you guys know that that's some power. And a huge shout out to the researchers because I was filming and uh, they just you know showed up and they are on a way to uh, point B. Um, seems like they are actually moving a onto a uh, different facility to do a checkup or something. And uh, but then, you know, as I was just kept pulling out my car, they waited for me. Uh, everything like that. So 
I am chasing the car. I know I saw, I, I might, I'm very excited right now, so probably you guys are thinking I need to shut up, but honestly, there is no sound coming off of the car anyway. So I am chasing Ionic 5 right from the back, and aside from the design, I mean, this just car feels like um, more of a robust i30, but lowered Tucson, kind of, that's how I feel. I mean, I see a Kia Sportage right in front of the Ionic 5, and just, um, well, you can do the comparison of your own. You guys tell me what it's like. Again, uh, Ionic 5 just went over the speed bump. Seems like uh, just the typical, you know, up and down, the rebounds. All right, so that's the brakes. Again, the third brake light is definitely unique. We've never seen that anywhere else. And just look at the speed it's picking up. And I bet he's just gently pressing on the gas pedal. Plenty, plenty of torque for you to uh, pick up the speed during the city drives and all. And just look at the rebound, the way it rolls over the speed bump. And there were some people worried about having no rear wiper. And uh, well, I see the concern, I understand that. And uh, one thing is, I also have a car that does not have a, a rear wiper. And of course, um, that one has much more slanted uh, rear hatchback or the door. The car is a Nissan 370Z. And I had no issue with that whatsoever due to the design. You know, hardly any um, dust is picked up there. And uh, immediately I can see that's uh, quite the similar case for Ionic 5 as well. Um, I see, I do see some dusts collected right underneath where the uh, two air holes are, right up on there, over there at the spoiler. But the mirrors where you will be actually um, looking is not really uh, covered up. And judging by how dirty the car is, um, you see, I don't think it will be much of an issue Unless you're a person who doesn't, you know, wash the car for like months. Is he going on a highway? Please? It would be amazing if he does. Again, a really a big shout out to Hyundai and the researchers and employees at R&D Center giving me this, giving us this great opportunity to have a sneak peek at this Ionic 5. And once again, a disclaimer is that this car is pre-production model. All EV cars in Korea have blue license plate. And he is going on a highway. Guys, ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seatbelt. <laughs> We're going for a ride. Alright, he's accelerating. Not full throttle, obviously. And uh, probably he is testing some of the features as he is riding along that Ionic 5 because that's what the R&D cars are for. And just look at this. Look how it blends with other cars on the roads. 
Um, the Hyundai R&D Center is in a uh, industrial area, so we are seeing a lot of trucks and so on, such and such. Honestly, I don't know where he's going. I am just going wherever, man. <laughs> well, it's gonna be within Korea, so that's okay. And I did not tint my window for this. The cyberpunk in reality. This car already makes it look like I'm in that year already. So futuristic, yet very modern as well. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's how it feels. That's uh, what it's like. And again, you guys will be able to tell how fast, quickly this car is going or picking up the speed. Um, if there is an open road, probably it seems like he's going to uh, press the gas pedal. It's opening up now. I don't know if, it, if, if it's gonna floor it. But if he does, you'll be able to uh, feel or kind of have a slight idea of what it's like because um, I have the exhaust on my Veloster and you'll see, feel how the car responds. For the record, uh, this car I'm driving, Veloster and DCT is about 300 horsepower with eight speed uh, dual clutch transmission. So it's not the fastest car, but it's not the slowest car either. So if he picks up the speed, you'll be able to tell how fast this EGMP based and first production model ever from Hyundai Group this Ionic 5 is. My HDA is so paying for its option and price. <laughs> 